Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. For premium content, Dwyer70905.substack.com. seven zero nine zero five dot substack dot com. More beer for us. Alexander Usyk delivered. I got him at a plus two oh five in the comment section of this video. Please tell us the odds you got. Please tell us the bounty you received or tell us the props you played that may or may not have hit. Now let me just tip my hat here to Anthony Joshua. Like many of you, I've followed boxing long enough to know that it's very hard being the king. It's very hard to wear the heavyweight crown. Right? I also know that in boxing, fighters don't know what they don't know until they face adversity. Now let's talk about this fight. It's a tale of three different four round segments. Right? This is a bus watch fight. Let me just say, Anthony Joshua has given us at least two of the most compelling fights of our time. The Anthony Joshua Vladimir Klitschko fight, I thought that is a classic. And I thought this fight was a classic as well. After the first four rounds, and they were shocking. I don't know how else to put it. They were shocking. After the first four rounds, we'll talk about them more a little later in the video. Usyk's up 3-1. Right? In the United Kingdom, Usyk has taken the crowd out of the fight. Let me also point out that the Zones crew that had Roy Jones Jr. and Darren Barker, they were A+. Plus. They were on their game. Right? You felt the excitement of the fight. Even... The crowd being hushed a bit early was exciting. Then you get the next three, excuse me, the next four rounds. And AJ makes a comeback. There are times over the next four rounds that are stunning. AJ outboxes Usyk, or so it seems. Then you get to the last four rounds. So I had it four rounds apiece going into the ninth round. You get to the last four rounds and folks, Usyk shows you why he's great. He leaves no doubt on who wins this fight. The end of the fight is as classic as it could get. Let's talk about it. But first, the things that leapt out to me. First, there's a jaw dropping, and I mean stunning, adjustment made by Usyk in this fight that folks need to look at and talk about. He bangs up AJ's right eye. You notice AJ's right eye is swelling. Then Usyk starts to go towards AJ's right hand. Usyk, who spends the early rounds circling to his right, circling toward AJ's left, as I expected, as he did in the Gassia fight. Well, here, he blows up AJ's eye. So then Usyk, the southpaw, starts going the other direction. And that educated left hand of his, he starts throwing it at a wide angle toward AJ's eye. Folks, as you watch it, as you see the fluidity, as you see him mixing up the angles of his left hand, you understood you were looking at a very unique, highly skilled boxer. Let me also point out too that this came after middle rounds where Joshua to his credit figured out that while hitting 
Usyk up top was a little bit tough to do because Usyk is marrying great footwork with upper body movement. Right? He's kinetic. So AJ, of course, figures out that he could throw right uppercuts. I'm not making this up. Right uppercuts to Usyk's body. And, of course, since Usyk is going toward Joshua's left, right? Usyk's moving to the right. Usyk's not making Joshua pay for throwing right uppercuts. In other words, Usyk's not prepared to throw left hands up top when Joshua is defenseless throwing the right uppercut to the body. So Joshua lands a series of right uppercuts to Usyk's body, at least four or five. They're heavy punches. So let's just say both fighters are making adjustments. But what I want people to do is to look at the 12th round. That's an exclamation point of a round. Right? Understand, Usyk, in addition to going to war, Joshua's right. Usyk, in the last minute, is downright scary. Right? This is one of the scariest rounds of the year. It doesn't have a knockdown. What it has is a guy who is gone. 11 rounds and 2 minutes who looks like he could go another three or four rounds. And understand, he's in against a heavyweight champ in the waning moments of that champion's reign. And the heavyweight champ has big power in both hands and is trying to push it. And what you have in that last minute is Alexander Usyk on his front foot. He's on his front foot. He's throwing heavy punches with both hands. He's varying the left hand. He's hitting Anthony Joshua. Joshua ends up leaning on the ropes. Folks, he's getting blown out at that moment. The little man, David, has turned Goliath with Goliath's title on the line into a guy who's overwhelmed, backing up, getting hit with big shots, isn't allowed to clinch. Usyk won't let him, right? Usyk's coming in at odd angles. Usyk has Joshua beaten. You understood when that bell rang that Joshua had nothing left. Joshua is leaning on the ropes. Right? Kind of like Ali and Zaire. Only here, Joshua has nothing. It's even worse than that, folks. The visual continues after the closing bell. Joshua goes over to his corner. You would have thought he was just in the thriller in Manila. He sits down. He's in obvious pain. He sits down. He's exhausted. Usyk goes to the middle of the ring and kneels down. I'm just telling you the visual is so powerful that if you were a judge and were secretly a member of Joshua's family, there is no way after that 12th round you could have given him the fight. I thought Usyk sweeps the last four rounds. Darren Barker on the telecast makes it clear that Usyk has the lead going into the 12th round, right? Barker's telling you, oh, I have Usyk up a couple of rounds here. Oh, I have Usyk up three rounds here, right? Barker is talking to, he's talking to the boxing public. Let me also point out to Roy Jones, excellent choice. Understand Roy Jones is one of the few guys in history who made the jump to the heavyweight division to win a title, and he did. Understand, one of Roy Jones's heroes is a mythical figure in boxing, Bob Fitzsimmons, a middleweight champ who made the jump to heavyweight, wins the title at heavyweight. 
drops back down to light heavyweight, wins the title at light heavyweight. Boxing's had some great fighters, folks, some great fighters. By the way, you can see some Bob Fitzsimmons fights here on YouTube, including some Bob Fitzsimmons losses. Well, understand, Roy Jones, at the end of the telecast, makes some statements that are heavy, that everyone should think about because they're on point. He says, look, he didn't like the way Joshua looked in some fights. He names the Andy Ruiz fight. He names the Pulev fight. And in the Pulev fight, Joshua drops Pulev. Pulev is finished in the third round. Pulev gets off the canvas semi-conscious and then lingers for several rounds. Right? Roy Jones goes further and he says, look, you have a genius boxer. He's talking about Usyk. Fighting a guy who, as Roy puts it, I don't think boxes that good. He said, you know you can't fight this fight, basically, is what Roy's saying. So let's talk about the mistakes that Joshua made. I thought there was a window here where Joshua could win the fight. Right? The person I want, there's a person in history who is still alive, who Joshua needs to sit down and talk with. Right? Like Joshua, this person, I've mentioned him in earlier videos, this person was heavyweight champion. This person was big, just like Joshua. They called him Big George Foreman. That was his nickname, Big. They called him Big George Foreman. Like Joshua, Foreman was a gifted puncher. People need to understand. When Foreman was young and was a prodigy coming up, understand, Foreman wins the 68 gold medal, just like Joshua. Foreman's mentor was Sonny Liston. Now, as if hanging around Liston wasn't enough in terms of Foreman being around punchers, Look in Foreman's corner. I have the Kenny Norton fight in my favorites folder here on YouTube. Look at his corner. You're going to notice two of the great punchers in history. Sandy Sadler, who, interestingly enough, firmly believed that punchers weren't born. They were made. Right? Sadler's the guy who beat Willie Papp three out of four fights. And you have the heavy, excuse me, the light heavyweight champion from the 1950s, right? Who was in the game so long, his nickname went from Mongoose to Old Mongoose, Archie Moore. Now understand, Foreman, highly skilled, great jab, one of the best jabs I've seen. Tough defense, he had an Archie Moore defense. The reason why I'm talking about the past so much is Joshua should have fought this fight like Foreman would have. In my favorites folder, I have Foreman's title win over Joe Fraser. Understand, Fraser aggressive. Right now, when you're fighting in Usyk, and there's the gap Roy Jones is talking about, and it's obvious in the first round, it's a foot movement gap. Right? Usyk not only has the foot speed advantage, Usyk has the technique. You're dazzled by his footwork. And he marries it to upper body movement, right? So he's moving in the upper body. I thought maybe there was a chance in this fight that Usyk would start slow. That Usyk would allow Joshua to win the early rounds just off inactivity. That's not what happened at all. Usyk starts fast, just like he did against Gassiev. In fact, the Gassiev fight is exactly how Usyk fights the first four rounds. Now, when you're the giant, and you understand the other guy has the superior technique, you're fighting a technician, a technical master. When you know that on your best day, you can't move your feet like this, when you understand that if you allow this guy to move around the ring, come in, pop you with left hands, continue moving, be hard to hit. If you're George Foreman, 
you understand that power and aggression can trump technique. What Joshua should have done is made sure a fight broke out. Run forward. Don't jog forward. Run forward. Push Usyk. It's illegal. It's cutting corners. Folks, I want you to look at two fights. Foreman Fraser. Look at Lewis Tyson. Both fights. The bigger man literally tries to impose himself by pushing the other guy. Then when the other guy tries to catch his balance, throw big shots. Throw your weight around. Right? Understand what Joshua should have done here when it was obvious that Usyk was the better boxer is Joshua had to go into big man mode. You know, Lennox Lewis against another big man, ironically, Andrew Galata, that first round. Right? Joshua should have said, hey, to hell with this. I'm just going to run up to this little man and I'm going to throw punches. And between the punches, I'm going to push him around. I can't allow a boxing match to break out. Well, folks, a boxing match breaks out. Let me just say this. As you see Usyk in round 12, when you see how fresh he is at the end of the fight, folks, he's cuffing Joshua around at the end of this fight. Cuffing him around. He has Joshua up on the ropes. When you see Usyk win either the last four rounds or three of the last four rounds, you have to look back and you have to wonder whether the middle four that Joshua won were even legit. Because at that point, Usyk started fast. He had a few rounds to play with. He may have known that Joshua was tiring. Well, instead of trying to outbox, outbox Usyk in Joshua's best part of the fight, rounds five through eight, wouldn't Joshua have been better served, even if the referee warned him, turning this into a street fight, right? You got the feeling watching the fight, even though Joshua gets staggered a few times that Joshua has the harder punch. Right? You understood that Joshua at times could pivot and would have windows where he could throw big punches. Why try to box Usyk? Why wouldn't you go over there and just empty the tank? Let's revisit Foreman Ali. I know we remember that as the rope-a-dope fight. That's what Ali called it afterwards. But I want people to re-watch the first round. You're going to notice Ali actually tries to stick and move. Foreman's so hyper-aggressive, Ali understands he can't stick and move. <coughs> Understand, in that fight, Ali was older, just like Usyk is in this fight. Right? Foreman makes it impossible for Ali not to engage. Right? A boxing match isn't allowed to break out in that fight. Because Foreman is too aggressive. He's throwing punches on Ali. Now he's facing Ali, who's a lot like Usyk, quite frankly. Right? And Ali is a guy who can fight bagging up, can fight coming forward. You know, it, you know, is up on the ropes, is, you know, defensively blessed, is um, having some punches, you know, blocked with his arms and stuff like that. Some punches the Foremans are getting through. But understand, Foreman makes it impossible for Ali to show the footwork that Usyk shows early in this fight. All you have to do is watch the first round and you understand. Usyk has the foot speed advantage. Usyk has the head movement advantage. Usyk's the more fluid fighter. Folks, you cannot have that dynamic play out round 
after round. By the time Joshua makes a comeback, you say, okay, Joshua has solved some of Usyk's timing. But again, the problem is Joshua's boxing. Where's big bad Anthony Joshua? Where's the Joshua who dropped Klitschko in, I believe, the fifth round? Right? Where's the Joshua who dropped Dylan White? Where's the heavy punching Joshua? Right? You didn't, you understood. The line wouldn't have been what it is if people thought Joshua was going to come in and try to outbox Usyk. When Joshua, before the fight, basically was saying, this is going to be a war of attrition. Right? This is going to be a stamina contest. You thought he was joking. Right? You thought, gee, this is going to be like Foreman Kenny Norton. Right? By the way, look at Foreman Kenny Norton. Look at how Foreman is running forward toward Kenny Norton. Understand, Foreman has slower hand speed. Slower hand speed than Anthony Joshua. Right? Foreman's letting his hands go. He understands you don't want a boxing match to break out against Kenny Norton. You know, Foreman understands, look, you've got to leverage your strengths. If it's size and power, you've got to have that trump the other guy's technique. You can't have the judges round after round see this guy's A-game, especially since Usyk isn't allowing the fight to be a slow fight. Understand, the first four rounds, folks, there are no slow rounds. Right? Usyk is over on Joshua's side of the ring at times. Right? Usyk is insisting on throwing punches. Usyk is forcing Joshua to move. Let me also say this too. <coughs> A key part of boxing is rhythm. Now, I said in the pre-fight video that I thought it takes Joshua a little bit to get his rhythm in a fight. Well, here you had a highly skilled opponent who, of course, is a southpaw, but who, more importantly, is playing games with rhythm. Look at Joshua's, excuse me, look at Usyk's right hand. You're going to notice not only is Usyk bouncing around, right? You know, throwing a fighter like Joshua, who's a bit more cautious, off rhythm. But then he's waving, literally waving his right hand around, right? He's wearing light colored gloves. He's waving his hand around. You don't know if he's throwing a jab. You don't know what he's doing. Then you figure out he's just waving his hand at times, throwing off the rhythm. So Joshua, who's trying to counter, but who needs for it to be sunny out to throw the counter, can't get the rhythm going to counter him. When your opponent's doing all that and you have your opponent outweighed by like 20 pounds and you're the puncher in the fight, when do you start aggressively coming forward? When do you start pushing the smaller guy out of the pocket so you can extend your arms and catch the guy when he comes back in the pocket? When do you start using forearms and elbows? When do you start making this a wrestling match? Right? Grabbing the shorter guy, letting the shorter guy know, hey man, you're in with the big man. Right? Pushing the shorter guy, leaning on the shorter guy, right? You know, coming in, throwing a big punch. You know the other guy is elusive and throws combinations. So when do you throw a big punch? Then grab the guy. Lean on the guy. Right? Pull down the guy's head. Where was that part of this fight? It's a great fight. But understand, we all knew that if it's a clean boxing match with not a lot of clinching, with extended periods of boxing. I think we all understood. Tony Bell, you tried to warn AJ before the fight that Usyk's a master boxer. 
you did not want a boxing match breaking out you wanted a fight if you were the bigger man with the bigger punch so instead what we got was a challenger showcasing his footwork showcasing his elusiveness being able to jump forward into the pocket right you know land excellent straight lefts early while he's circling to his right Joshua's left then of course you had you had the smaller man later after he puffs up Joshua's eye circling to Joshua's right literally right into right-handed Joshua's power zone without Joshua just throwing hard right hands in the off chance that he lands one of them. Let's just say Usyk got a chance to showcase his skills a bit too much, including the last third of the fight. If I'm Joshua, Foreman at one point offered to train Joshua. You don't have to give up your trainers. You could just say, hey, you know, let's have George come in and give his thoughts. Or just do your own due diligence. <laughs> AJ, <coughs> the reason I'm saying Foreman is Foreman's a little bit more rough and tumbled, rough and tumble than the refined Lennox Lewis or than a refined Vitaly Klitschko. Let's face it, it's too hard for a fighter in his 30s to figure out how to time and lean and half punches end here and block punches with his hands <coughs> like Vitaly Klitschko did. Right? Lennox Lewis, great jab, thinking man's fighter. I think it's very hard to be Lennox Lewis. Right? Foreman, who had great skills, also had a rough neck side. I know Foreman talks about how scared he was against Joe Fraser. He also wants you to believe that he was too scared to fight Mike Tyson. Let's get real. Foreman demolished Joe Fraser twice. He was so scared of Joe Fraser that he takes Joe's title in the second round of the first fight and he drops Joe multiple times in the rematch. That's how afraid of Joe Fraser Foreman was. <coughs> Had Foreman, Foreman fought the Camden buzzsaw. Dwight Cowie, a smaller version of Tyson, destroyed him, right? Understand, had Foreman fought a Tyson, Foreman would have been pushing Tyson just like he pushes Fraser. Look at how he pushes Fraser, by the way. Both hands, right on the shoulders, repeatedly. And he's throwing big punches. There's a giveaway to Foreman's personality. Fraser's on the canvas one time, and Foreman looks at him. Right, and you could tell it's a Sonny Liston thing. Foreman, who you know had a face where he could just make it look expressionless, is letting the other guy know, Look, man, you're on the canvas, you just got dropped by me. Remember what I look like, I'm still here. Right, I believe that's the nastiness that Anthony Joshua needs. His fight against Usyk, he should be thinking, This is a smaller guy. I'm going to have to push him. I'm going to have to body him. Right? I'm going to have to body him, push him, lean on him. You know, what I can't do is let a pocket form and then let the world see that this guy has superior foot speed, superior, you know, head movement. Just look at the head movement. Just look at the upper body movement, we'll call it. Joshua's upper body stationary, folks. He's fighting a guy who's herky-jerky, whose body's moving. You don't know what he's doing with his body. <coughs> but the one thing you know is that you can't time him. Joshua shouldn't have allowed that dynamic to play out. It was clear that Joshua needed rounds 10, 11, and 12 to win the fight. And that's when, of course, Usyk steps on the gas. Right? Look at the judges' scorecards 
on my scorecard, I had Joshua winning one of the first four rounds. I had Joshua tied up 8-8. Eight, eight. I'm not, excuse me, at the eight round mark, 4-4 four, four, four after eight. Right? So I had Joshua winning four rounds, half the fight, going into the last four. I'm not sure if I gave Joshua another round. Let's just say the end of the fight, Usyk shows you how Joshua should have been fighting the fight. Right? Usyk has Joshua up on the ropes. Usyk's throwing big shots up top. Right? Usyk's body language is, hey man, I'm Goliath right now. Joshua was unable to pull that off against a fighter with better technique. I congratulate Joshua on taking on a very tough opponent here it did not work out for him in the heavyweight division heavyweights age more slowly if Joshua wants to continue his career he'll have ample opportunity against world-class opponents I just don't know how he ever beats Usyk let me also point out too that this fight changes everything are you sure having watched rounds 9, 10, 11, and 12? Are you sure that if Usyk fought Tyson Fury on British soil, that Tyson Fury would be the favorite in that fight? And I say that right after Usyk wins a fight as a better than 2-1 to one underdog. And of course I say that with Fury being a 3-1 to one favorite over Deontay Wilder. Let me also say, too, that I do expect Fury to beat Wilder. I would expect Anthony Joshua to beat Deontay Wilder. But what I want people to consider is that this opens the door to a whole nother room of the heavyweight division. Right? To be blunt, Maris Breedis gave Usyk a harder fight than Anthony Joshua. I believe we're moving away from big men, right? That big man era was so ossified that Anthony Joshua came in here trying to beat Usyk on points. In other words, the big men didn't even know that what made them great was being big men, right? If Usyk fights Tyson Fury, I'm expecting even a boxer like Tyson Fury to have to eventually be a big man in that fight as he had to become to beat Steve Cunningham who dropped him right Usyk's too dangerous to try to try and outbox right I believe if a big man is gonna beat Usyk that big man is gonna have to come in and he's gonna have to flash some power He's going to have to make part of the fight about size, isn't he? That's how I see it. The other guys who I think are in the room in the heavyweight division, Usyk's a clever southpaw. So too is Luis Ortiz. I know Ortiz lost twice to Deontay Wilder, but styles make fights. Right? Ortiz should be someone on your radar right now definitely Michael Hunter Hunter fought Usyk I want people to look at that film Hunter has his moments in that fight I believe a Hunter rematch a Maris Breedis rematch that first fight was razor close I believe those are riveting matches let's remember Breedis beats Manuel Char who actually held a title at one point at heavyweight. Knocks him out. Look up that film. Right? I don't believe uh, Ergovic beats Usyk. Right? If I'm Anthony Joshua, I know contractually I have the right to a rematch. I don't take it. I don't take it. Right? Understand the 12th round, to think that fighting the first 11 and a half rounds 
gets you the Usyk of the last half of the 12th round has got to be dispiriting. Losses are tough enough. <coughs> I understand Joshua did something I wouldn't do. He had the Andy Ruiz rematch. But Andy provides you with a place to hide because he doesn't have the foot speed. Joshua survived that. I believe he gets undressed in a rematch against Usyk. Right? Usyk, I'm sure, is prepared for Joshua trying to impose himself on him. And Usyk, who seemed to be able to get behind Joshua on demand in this fight, I'm sure will then say, okay, player, you're here trying to crash the pocket. Let me remind you of the last 30 seconds of our fight. Right? So if I'm Joshua, I take a step back here. I let the Usyk rematch pass. I let Usyk fight Tyson Fury. I show up at ringside for that fight, just like Ali did for Foreman Fraser. Then I try to take on the winner. Right? If it's Usyk, okay, fine. But at least this time I know I beat him, I'm undisputed. If it's Tyson Fury, then we get the huge mega fight that got derailed in the last few months. Right? That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Um, I believe Joe Joyce would be in over his head in a rematch against Usyk, right? They've already fought in semi-pro, right? Obviously, Joe wants to be the best he can be. You know, if I'm Usyk, and I know this sounds counterintuitive, I stay away from Joseph Parker. Because Parker can punch, Parker can actually step on the gas and try to impose himself on opponents, right? Parker's an interesting individual, I'll just say that, right? Of course, another big fight for Usyk would be a rematch against Derek Chisora, right? But it's really a tribute to Usyk that some of the toughest fights out there for him are rematch fights of fights he won. Right? Maris Breedis, Michael Hunter, Derek Chisora. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to reading the comment section, including the part where people talk about how much they cleaned up on this fight. Thanks for stopping by.